Good morning friends, welcome back to the farm. I have a camping video for you. It's been, well, like months and months and months and months since we had a little camping adventure. And this is the first time that I get to take Sunny out on an outdoor adventure, which is so cute. So in this video, you're gonna see us rocking up at this very fancy glamping site. Huge shout out to Seaforts Cornwall. You'll find all their information down below um, for inviting us along and saying that I could bring a friend, which is so cool. So I gave a shout out to this crazy bird with pink hair that also has a YouTube channel who I never met. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? So please kick back, enjoy this video, and I will see you at the end. So Sunny and I are about to go on our first ever camping adventure. Are you excited? Mm, I smell a fish and chips, so I think he's very excited about that. So let's go meet the lovely Karen with the pink hair and let's go clamping. I'm excited. Mwah. Let's go. Well, we all made it. It went very well. It's the longest journey I've done, just me and him before. I think he was cool. I don't know if I've got him attached in the car properly. He is restrained, but whether I've done it legally or not, I need to look into that more. But yeah, we're here. Who's that pink haired beauty I see? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Who's our puppy dog? I'm boring. Hi. Hi. So what do you this think? Is your, it's gorgeous. I don't want to go home. <laughs> you just got here already. She's not going home. That's it. Right. She now lives here. Yeah. That's it. I think. <laughs> so tell everyone who you are. So I am Karen from Karen's Gone Wild. I'm a slightly crazy pink haired lady, as you'll find out this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, we really, really will. <laughs> okay, I need to put the camera down because there's lots of dogs off leads. So this is going to be interesting. Let's see how this goes, shall we? So this is our very fancy schmancy accommodation. That's where Karen's staying. There's a couple with a little dog the other side of her. And then I'm in this amazing bell tent. What? Are you serious? Sunny, this is how posh people can. <gasps> Look at that bed. I know. How fancy is this? What do you think, Sonny? Do you think you could get used to camping? Yeah, I'm not sure, he says. I'm not sure about that, Jane. Johnny came and joined us all that evening, which was really cute. Um, and we spent the evening in Karen's bell tent because it was really cold, really windy. We couldn't be bothered to light a fire. Uh, and in her tent, she had two single beds, which I also do. I'll show you those in the morning. Um, but she had the two single beds in her tent. So Johnny and I could kind of sit there and use those beds as a sofa. And it was just a little bit more sociable than the tent that we were in. wants to get in there with you. <laughs> it happened. In go those back legs. <laughs> and he's going to snuggle with his daddy. <laughs> this is the first time he's been on the bed with us. Nope. No, it's not. <laughs> Baby boy. He was so gorgeous. What was that, puppy? What was that? Good morning. Here's Sunny Bob. We've got a happy little camping pup. He was so good. He had such a good night. He just slept on his little bed next to my bed all night long. Didn't hear a peep from him. So we're going to give him his breakfast, then take him for his morning poo walk, and then... <laughs> and then it's going to be our breakfast and you're going to have to sit and watch us eat sausages. Yes, you are. You're going to learn to love this cupboard, puppy dog. Yummy. I do normally mix dry food in with half a tin of meat for his, well, for both of his meals, but he's already had his dry biscuits. We just sat and he ate them out of my hand in the, cause they're in the tent and meat was in here. And yeah, he actually ate more biscuits from my hand than he would have if I'd mixed it in with his meat. Funny boy. So that was really good night's sleep. Those mattresses, I need to find out what brand they are. They're memory foam, but wow, they were so comfy. Oh my God, I want that mattress. Supremely comfortable, really lovely. Oh, hang on, he's chasing his bowl all over the slidey floor. There you go, pup. Um, so yeah, so today Johnny's gonna be heading home and Karen and I are staying another night. And Karen's got an injury. She fell over a couple of months ago and she's had sciatica really badly ever since. So she can't walk very far. A small amount of gentle walking is really, really good for her. It kind of frees everything up, but 
um, we can't like do the coast path or anything like that. So we're going to be around camp today. We'll probably get a fire going, no doubt. Um, I'm hoping that Johnny will drop us down into Millbrook uh, before he goes home. Because I'm cooking for us tonight, I probably need to get some more bits and pieces to make it a little bit of a feast. Because the trouble is, Karen thinks I'm a really good cook. Just because I've got a load of cooking videos on YouTube, I mean, for goodness sake. <laughs> so, so far I've brought sausages to cook on the fire and a bowl of shredded veggies to make a coleslaw with. As far as, like, feasts go, that's not exactly a feast. Was that yummy, sir? Do you need your poo walk now? I think that was a yes. We must go. Ta-ta. So this is the Guard House Cafe, which is on the same site as the Seaforts kind of glamping site. Since I last visited and ate here, uh, I've actually had to omit gluten from my diet and I already didn't eat dairy, so I'm a little bit of an annoying punter. And I should have pre-warned Kathy, who does all the food, all the cooking, um, that I was gluten and dairy free. Uh, but I kind of forgot and it kind of just makes me feel weird and awkward whenever I have to tell people that. I told her and she managed to knock up an amazing plate of food. All their sausages are gluten free anyway. And I just, I didn't feel weird. I didn't feel awkward. Uh, so thank you, Kath. I really appreciate that. It was a delicious breakfast. And I think we'll be back tomorrow. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Do you have a nice breakfast? Good. So yeah. good. Let's give you a proper tour of my new Des Res. So each tent comes with this light decking area, which is fab when the grass is wet. We've got a couple of outdoor chairs and then let's head on inside. And now we've got a bit more light today. You can actually see. So we have slept in here. We have kind of destroyed it a little bit. Everything was very neat and tidy. Oh, look, I put that pillow back the wrong way. Don't look at that. So we've got a bin. We've got a lovely, comfy, butt-shaped poof. This is very cool. This is like a charging station. So in here is like a leisure battery. That's really, really handy. It comes with a lantern and then there's some fairy lights over there. And then this center pole has fairy lights all the way up too, which is really, really pretty. Seriously comfy bed. That mattress, memory foam, absolutely divine. Gorgeous little puppy dog. Hi, Sunny. Really lovely. Some really nice towels, rugs. So spacious. Really, really, really comfortable living space. And then the best bit, and especially when the sun comes out, is that view. Would you look at that? Holy moly. So over there is Plymouth. That's the Plymouth breakwater there. I don't know if you can see that. Lots of naval ships and cruise ships coming and going um, in this stretch of water, which is always interesting. You've got your own seating area and a little privacy screen outside, a little fire pit, which is really cute. And then this is for the family. So this is the little baby bell tent and there's two single beds in there. So these are the showers and toilets that come with the very posh glamping site and you get given this like key ring with this little tag on and you have to put that there and then touch that top bit and that didn't work. <laughs> Let's try this one shall we? Put your tag there, touch the pad, it automatically opens and then here we have sink, toilet and shower and it's got shampoo and conditioner and body wash. Um, these are little towels for drying your hand and then when you've used them there's a little basket to pop them in. It's just really nicely done. It's just an old shipping container but it's really clean, it smells really nice and it just feels really fancy. Well done guys, I love it. Now when you go camping with another YouTuber, it's inevitable that you have to do the whole thumbnail picture. So the way that I usually do a thumbnail is I just set my phone to create a video and then I can just take a clip out of that video like to use as the thumbnail. It's much, much easier for me doing it that way than trying to get a right, the right photo, especially when there's two people and a dog in this instance, making sure that no one's blinking or pulling dumb faces or whatever. So this is how the thumbnail for the video you're currently watching was taken. It's so funny. <laughs> and then obviously we had to also do one for Karen's channel too, but she's way more pro than me and she just got it done in a nanosecond. <laughs>
<laughs> I hope you enjoy this little behind the scenes. So around breakfast time, I realised I'd forgotten my wallet and I felt really weird. Even though Johnny lent me some money, I felt really weird because I'd invited Karen along and not having my debit card on me and not having any real cash on me, I just felt really weird. Also, at this point, Sunny was starting to get really wound up with other dogs that were being walked on the site, the neighbour's dog. And he'd done a lot of firsts over the previous 24 hours to this. And I didn't want to push it. I didn't want to ruin it for him or anyone else, I guess. Um, so I made the decision that early afternoon I actually popped home. We only live half an hour away. I dropped the dog off with Johnny and I brought my wallet back, which is like a security blanket. I'm not even entirely sure I used it, but just knowing it was there, it, I just felt much happier about it. So we lit fire. We had friends come over and join us and we had a lovely, lovely time. And this is the point when obviously I start to think about making my cowboy stew, which is a little bit of an infamous recipe. I'll link to it down below if you've never seen it before. It is a camping classic and it's such a good and cheap way to feed a crowd. And it's really easy to like just kind of bulk it out to feed more people. Anyway, the plan was to cook it over the campfire that did you notice Karen lit with her little handmade feather sticks and a flint and steel. Way to go, Karen. But one of the members of our little party who shall remain nameless, had a little bit of a hangover. So it could have taken us like well over an hour to get the fire ready and then to actually cook the meal on the fire. So what we actually did instead was we took all of the food into the kitchen in the cafe and I cooked it in there. So it took about 30 minutes. It was dead quick, dead easy. Um, and it meant our little hungover friend could get some good scran in his belly and then get home and get to bed. <laughs> So, Kathy, thank you for letting me gate crash your kitchen. And I hope you guys enjoyed the cowboy stew. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've got a normal pack of cards, all blue, all different. If you could just reach it and grab any card you like, being as your clubs. Yeah. Have a look, show him. Ah. And remember the card, otherwise, it's a rubbish trick. So, all I'm going to do is cut the pack in half, get you to place your card on top of there, and I'm going to lose your card in the pack, like so. Yeah? Magicians do all this funny stuff to find a playing card. I've discovered. If you give the card a smack, one of them changes colour by magic as we go through all of the blue cards. We find there's a red one, roughly where you put your card yeah. in the pack. Hopefully, that's the card you picked. Oh my god. It's not bad, is it? Oh, very good. <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same trick again, yeah, but with a different card. What I'm going to do, if you could just pop your hand on top of that one, yeah. So that's a ten of clubs, and then I'm gonna shuffle through the pack. Karen, just say stop anywhere you like. Stop. Stop there. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna do the same trick with this card. Yeah. Remember this card. So give the pack a smack. Go through the cards. Tell me when you can see the red card. Anybody see the red card? No. Nope. I did say there was only one, didn't I? Yeah. Which is that one there. There's no look. way. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's amazing! I told you, he's legit, this one! <laughs> That's insane! It is insane. He is insane, it's true. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? Two elastic bands, you can check them if you want to. The no, normal, no, no, trust, yeah. normal everyday elastic bands. Yeah? Just so you fingers got... I don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> one goes there, one goes there, and they get locked behind each other. Yeah? So it can't go forwards, can't go backwards, can't go left or right, but if you just swing them around like that. about 11 o'clock at night and um, Karen's gone to bed bless her she's been in so much pain this weekend it's been really hard to watch her actually be so uncomfortable I've had sciatica and it's really 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 horrid that's it that's the end of our little camping adventure I'm just about to head to bed too and then we're gonna meet up for breakfast in the morning which I'm looking forward to and then head off our separate ways and I have to say it's been so lovely spending time with her 
you know when you meet someone that you just click with straight away no messing that's how it's been with Karen I feel like I've known her forever we've had some lovely conversations obviously both doing YouTube we've got a lot in common there and I just yeah I just really appreciate hanging out with her I think she's going to become a long-standing friend in my life at least I hope she is we had this really fun um idea that we asked on social media on Karen's and on mine for people to share questions for a little Q&A so we're going to have a breakfast Q&A in the morning which is going to be so fun um, the cafe here on site is called the Guard House Cafe Bar um, and Michael and Kathy have become really good friends of mine and Johnny's actually since we first came here about a year ago we camped up here I think it might have been last Easter actually on a Volkswagen camper van kind of meet that's when we first came but they've become really good friends anyway so we're going to go and have breakfast there and they've got like um They've got the main little cafe where the like counter is and there's a couple of tables but then there's like a back room which I think was the old jail. It's the guard house and it's like got bars on the window and stuff so I'm hoping that there's no other punters going to be in there and in the morning we can go in there and have a breakfast and like ask each other everybody's questions which is going to be so much fun. <laughs> some of you have left some cracking questions. It's going to be a scream going through them i'm looking forward to that so let this girl get some beauty sleep please and uh i'll see you in the morning night night <laughs> And we are at the end of our camp. We are. We'll be going home relatively soon. We're still going to have a little poodle around the site, which will be fun. But last night, as we were sat in here putting the world to rights, we decided to ask Instagram and Facebook to ask us anything. Weren't people tame? Yes. There was yes. not one saucy question, which I'm kind of no. grateful for because we probably wouldn't have answered it. I, I had a few people going, really? Anything? But then they didn't, <laughs> then they didn't follow up with up. anything good. <laughs> Rubbish. So anyway, what we've done is scribble them all on a bit of paper. We've just, I've just dove into the bag and asked you a bunch, which if you want to go and see those answers, which are pretty funny, then head over to Karen's channel to watch her video. Um, and now she's about to ask me. Go so for it. I've my little coffee bag here. It's like a little lucky dip. Right, first question. I'm have to say it smells lovely it's being good a coffee, coffee bag. It? Right. Mandy Craig, most tasty cook-up that you've made yourself while camping? Oh, Christ. Well, I've got lots to choose from, really, <laughs> yeah. haven't I? If you don't know, well, you would because you're on my channel, but if you've come over from her channel, you don't know who the heck I am. <laughs> I have a whole library of one-pot camping meals. That's what this channel started off as. There are hundreds um, What's your personal favourite then, maybe? Um, 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 a crikey. I always love the quesadillas, like the pizza quesadilla. That is just so quick and easy and blinding. Everyone loves it. I also love the cowboy stew, which we actually had last night. We did. It's flipping lovely. And there's another one that I can, I always, it always pops into my mind because visually it looks so stunning and it's, it's all bright colours and beautiful, but it tastes so good. And it's because I've got intolerance and stuff, like it's, absolutely fine for my tummy is beef and broccoli just a stir fry beef and broccoli oh, oh it's nice. really good so sorry that was three lovely but you get me start talking about food i'm not yeah, gonna stop it, so yeah. i think we did quite well and you're getting three really <laughs> what about you absolutely i think for me it's um i've done like some meals from scratch when i'm out there and the one pot shepherd's pie for me mm -hmm. I love that it's so easy is the potato and in mixed in with it it's no so it's um you end up doing that in your mug so I suppose okay. okay it's not technically one pot was it smash but yeah well yeah. the, the um, Idaho and mash yeah really good actually mm. surprisingly good um or stir fry mm. I do make a mean stir fry when I'm camping as well it's so nice isn't it to have fresh veggies it especially if you definitely. might have been eating pot noodles for a yes, little while potentially so yeah fab right. good question Happy Always Mandy. happy to talk about food. Yeah, that's, that was quite a handy <laughs> question for you, wasn't it? <laughs> Considering these are potluck. Uh, the Guardhouse Cafe Bar. Where is, we had breakfast. We've had breakfast this morning. Hogs pudding or black pudding? <gasps> Ooh, I'm going to say hogs pudding. Do you, does everyone know what hogs pudding is? It's a Cornish thing, isn't it? Mm, I would. I don't know. So, so you might not even know what black pudding is um in the uk we have sausage made from blood which is called black pudding 
Um, I like it, but I don't like the slabs that you get like fried on a fry up. I can't oh. eat it like that. But if you crumble it and then like um, fry it, that with seafood, like with scallops, mm. is absolutely delicious. But actually, as a slab, I can't. I always give mine to Johnny. I can't eat it. But um, hog's pudding is normal pork sausage, I believe. I've never made it, so don't quote me on this. You might want to Google it or fact check. I think it's just normal sausage, but it's boiled. Um, like in its casing and then you slice it off and fry it for your breakfast and I think it's a Cornish thing I really I should know more about this I do think it is Cornish I've never seen it anywhere no. else I don't think so I would always go hogs pudding if it was like on a fry up because I couldn't eat a slab of black pudding personally See, I love black pudding I love it like yeah big slabs of it yeah yeah no I don't it's too irony it's too it's blood it's... I have to have it crisp be, though it has to be like well cooked yeah but yeah i do love but i'd love both mm. to be fair that's my ideally both yeah. to choose yeah, why do we them. have to choose my god <laughs> you're both. nasty <laughs> stingy <laughs> we're gonna get another food question i, I like it. it bearded pen man who's your favorite magician mm, paul daniels <laughs> david blaine for me next <laughs> I imagine you watching the video know who we're talking about. This is my mate Chris that was here last night. He's a magician. And he was here doing magic and he was incredible. Yes. So Chris, obviously. Obviously it's obviously you. Obviously it's you. Fishing for compliments. <laughs> was amazing. Very, we love you, Chris. Good. Yes, we do. <laughs> Deb Phillips says, how do you manage to get the perfect poached egg cooking in the van? Plus, <laughs> food. what's your favourite camping breakfast? Right, the poached egg thing, uh, I love poached eggs. And if I go out for breakfast, I always get them to cook them because they can be a little bit tricksy. Um, but the answer is I have chickens, so I go and get the freshest egg from the nest because then the white of the egg all stays together in the water. Also, don't like hard boil your water, like big bubbles, because that will just spread it. Um, you, they talk about vortex, they talk about um, wrapping it in cling film and all that. You don't need to do that if your egg is really fresh not any oxygen not any oxygen no oxygen has got in through the shell yet so the because the shell is i'm going sciency on this one do you need that level of detail possibly not <laughs> get a really really fresh egg or if you haven't or if they're from the supermarket you don't know how old they are use the poaching pods and what was the other question what's your favorite camping breakfast well i quite enjoyed my breakfast this morning really oh, love i'll yeah. put a photo on the screen right now yeah cook breakfast for me all the way mm. everything but if I'm Ideally. camping, I rarely do that because of the cleanup and I hate washing up. Mm. Uh, I really like chia pots, you know, chia seeds, coconut milk, fresh fruit, oh, that kind of thing. Nice, nice. Um, and you can make those ahead of time and then just add the liquid the night before or an hour or two before. Yeah. I think for mm -hmm. me, it's a bacon and egg bap or nice. wrap or something. I just, yeah. Nice. When you're out. Like That's that true. Bacon butty. So good. Take a uh, bacon butty. Yeah. Amazing. Easy. I can't believe you've got all the food questions. I can. Quite funny. <laughs> I'm like a magnet to anything to do with food. Uh, Mandy Craig again. Best non-stick cooking pots and pans that you've used, please. <laughs> These are the best questions. How funny. This was completely done completely by random. random. Um, so I'm funny. gonna say I'm assuming you're cooking on gas. If you're cooking on a campfire, please don't use non-stick because the temperatures of the fire are too variable. Yeah and non-stick can be really dangerous. I know all the companies say that ours is perfectly safe. It's really not very no. good for us. However, I do still use non-stick. Um, I recently bought a little, tiny little frying pan from Sainsbury's, um, a supermarket here in the UK. Um, I'm not entirely sure I could tell you what brand it was, but it was just for doing scrambled eggs. It's the only thing I do in it, and I use that at home. And it's been brilliant so far. So if, I don't know if you're watching this kind of as this video comes out, have a look on the Sainsbury's website and look at the nonstick pans that they sell. It wasn't a Sainsbury's brand. It was like, I don't know, Breville or something. I really rate that. Um, other than that, I don't really have any offerings. No. When I'm camping, cooking, I've got a titanium bowl that I use as a frying pan and I have to say that works pretty well I You're think it's stick. almost I th well I think it's like almost seasoned because I've okay. used it so many times I think it depends what kind of cooking you're doing doesn't yeah. it like if you you know if you've got a well seasoned like Dutch oven or cast iron pan, yeah, yeah cast iron skillet or something like that then then that would work just as well but I think for cooking yeah I think you're hard pushed if you've got a tranja you can buy a tranja non-stick frying pan you know so it just depends 
really what you're cooking on Mandy, but Mandy's in my Facebook group, so you can always oh, pop she... me some questions if you want to, Mandy. So yeah, but I hope that helped. <laughs> the Guardhouse Cafe Bar, where we had breakfast this morning, poached or fried? Actually, both. Why do we have to choose, yeah, everybody? Why does he, yeah. um, if someone else is cooking, like I say, poached, because it's such a pain in the butt. Also, can I just have a little story? Can mm. we have a side note? Go for it. If you didn't know, I have a TV show. It's on Amazon Prime. And in that, I do a poached egg. I can't remember what recipe it is, but basically I poach an egg on camera with a TV crew in my kitchen. And I use the fresh egg straight from the hen house just to make sure it holds together and it doesn't hold together. <gasps> and it's on the show. Oh, no. It's worth watching. Just, <laughs> just for that. That was mortifying. I had to do another one. So, you know, that they, they do they, like, ah, this is me making my poached egg. And oh, crap, it's all gone to <laughs> shit. And then they do like, I had to cook another one that did work and he didn't film me cooking that one, of course, um, for the like that, okay, this is what it looks like when it's all done. So like that shot looks beautiful, but if you actually look in the pan, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> but also fried egg, I mean, hard to beat, isn't it? Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. It's, it's fried for me purely because of the whole issues with poaching them. Mm. Yeah. Poaching pods are really good. Have you ever used those? Yes, we have. Yeah. We've not had overly much dry because I, I want it nice and runny in the middle, but mm. fully cooked, and I find it hard to get that. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. So no, I have. So you have to make them like quite regularly. Oh, uh, yeah. And I don't know how you do it in a poaching pod, but how I poach an egg with a really fresh egg. You need to come to my farm. I do. You, we will do this for you, but you have to do it a few times. Like maybe take a week or something to get. <laughs> This is how I work out how a recipe really does work. So you poach your egg and then you get a slotted spoon and then you just kind of gently lift up the egg while it's still in the water and you kind of wobble the spoon oh, <laughs> and then you okay. watch the wobble of the egg. Oh. Seriously, I am this OCD about things. It's so funny. And you watch and then you put it back in the water. If it's like sloppy, it's raw. And you just keep doing that and eventually you will learn the perfect, what I can see the wobble. Perfect wobble. Yeah. The perfect wobble, ah. and you will know that your white is cooked, but your yolk is fine. Mm. And then it, if it all kind of goes like that, you know you've gone over and it's just rock hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. I'll cook everybody poached eggs. You'll be fine. Amazing. Thanks. <laughs> you got to learn your wobble, love. I have got to learn the wobble. <laughs> uh, my wobble's all wrong. Uh, so this is from... Oh, can you help help my smash? Yes, oh. la, 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 smash. Yeah, the la la la. Oh. la, 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 la I actually la, have to count the L's because I'm like, how many is that? <laughs> oh, Lord, smash. What advice would you give yourself? That's a good question. Yourself? Younger self. Yeah, I wrote that down wrong. It should have said younger, younger self. self. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I didn't think about the answer as I was writing it down then. Um, Shall I give you my answer? Yes. Go. Don't worry so much what other people think oh, about you. So true. God, how much of our lives do we spend worrying about what other people think? Especially as don't, women. Don't do it. No. Who cares? And don't you find that the people you worry about what they're thinking aren't actually the people that mean no. that much to you? No. Yeah. Like the people Absolutely. that I went to school with that I haven't seen since I left school. Yeah. Why would I care what they think about yeah. me? No, That's exactly. so true. Exactly. Uh, I think my advice would be, so long as no one dies, it's all good. <laughs> like, we're all a long time dead, so like, just we go are. and enjoy it. Yeah. Just go and play with the world. Yes, absolutely. High yes. five, sister. As <laughs> long as no one dies, love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if someone dies, then that's, that's not that's great. That's not so good. You've got to live with that rest <laughs> of your life. Right, what have we got in here? We've got... Three more left oh, after this one. There were right a lot, there. weren't there? There were. Phileas Fogg, great name. If you could wake up anywhere tomorrow, where would you choose and why? Oh my God. Canada, top of my bucket list. And my answer would have been like 10, 15 years ago, uh, Johnny and I, we wanted to go to Canada for a month, get in a canoe on a river and then just canoe. Oh wow. Like down a never ending river, which I kind of figure there are lots of in Canada. And like just fish and watch bears and camp. Um, physically, I don't know that that's right up my street these days. So instead, I'll have a van and I'll go do van life in Canada. Thank Amazing. you. That would work. How about you? 
uh, Scotland in the mountains. Oh, I just, any particular I've mountains? never, I've just never been to Scotland. <gasps> no. Oh and my god. I just want to go. And yeah, so for me to be able to wake up in the mountains in Scotland, oh my yeah, God, yes. would be incredible. It's going to be like a playground for you when you get there, isn't <sighs> yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, wow. absolutely. So yeah, so that's mine. Nice. Great question, Phileas Fogg. like that one. Yellow Table Theatre. What was your childhood nickname? <laughs> I'm not sure that I had any, at least that nobody said to my face. Um... My brother was in the Air Force. My surname is Sarche. He's from the Channel Islands, from Guernsey. Um, my brother was in the Air Force and his nickname was Ketchup. Like Sachet of Ketchup. Oh, right. Which I always thought that was ah. really humorous. Um, when I went travelling, I had red hair for most of my life. I've only recently stopped dying and gone grey. Uh, and when I was in Australia backpacking many years ago, I had red hair and my nickname was Blue. And I loved, loved Amazing. being called Blue. Amazing. What about you? Um, again, I don't think I really had a nickname like Kaz. Kaz. I hate. Oh, Kaz. Don't no, call her Kaz. Don't call me Kaz now. Um, but yeah, that was like the biggest one really. And I'm more K now. People K. call me K. I've heard people call you K. I like that. Yeah. And I like that too. So yeah, stick with K, not Kaz. Unless you're trying to really yourself. upset. <laughs> I get people comment sometimes, right, Kaz? And I'm like, please, please. Do you not? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't you can't like really it. shorten Jane. Jane is so simple and to the point. You can't really simplify no. simple, can you? Although, but I do like blue. Feel free to call me blue. Normal, blue. Quite often people will just be like, J. Right. Or I'll get Ka. 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 <laughs> because they're just really lazy. It just seems quite a cornish Ka. thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, Dar. Like Darren. Oh, that's. Like, I call everyone sweetheart or darling because I can never remember anyone's name. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. That's good. That's good. <laughs> good. I like that. Uh, right, Strand Vintage. What law would you introduce if given the chance? Oh, God. Can I do this as like my superpower one as well? Like, um, no world leaders <laughs> can make decisions for their people that their people don't want. Can we make that? Can we just make that a law? Yes. I like that. Thank you. Let's do that. Lay it. Okay, done. Move on. What's yours? Don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a law against it. <laughs> About dickness. <laughs> it's the anti-dickness law. <laughs> Love it. Done. Love that. Pass. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, I think this is the last one. Oh, this is. We have to invent one. some more. This is so fun. It is good, isn't it? Johnny McBeatty, what's your favourite chocolate? Oh, lactose intolerant, so you know. Um, I do quite like Nomo, um, and I specifically like their Easter eggs because, like, the, I, Nomo, it's no missing out or something it stands for. It's oh, okay. dairy free, I think it's gluten free too. Um, but the bars, they're just like, they're uncomfortable when you break a chunk off and put it in your mouth. It just doesn't sit nice, like a oh. Yorkie. It's, they're big, chunky yeah, chunks. Yeah, 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 yeah. But their Easter egg, obviously, you break a bit off and it just moulds to the roof of your mouth. Anyway, I'm saying all this. Um, I ate one this Easter. I, I buy myself a Nomo Easter egg every year and it gave me such a bad belly that I'm just Aww. not, I don't, I'm not doing chocolate anymore. Although that Milky Oh, yeah, bar, the little Milky, milky Way. Bar. Milky Way. Milky Way. Yeah. She bought me a little milky, little dairy-free. Little dairy-free milky, dairy milky, milky, milky Way bar, yeah. It's quite nice and I didn't have a bad belly, so. Oh, well, that's good. There we are. There's my Excellent. answer. Um, I don't know, really. I like dark chocolate mm -hmm. um and um aldi actually sell a really dark chocolate that's got orange i know the one. Oh my god that's really good and it's dairy free really nice is it mm -hmm. little do one as well oh. really nice really really nice so yes i enjoy that Fabulous. that's mine really so that's it amazing thank you everyone for Fabulous. those questions that was thank so much you. fun I know. we should do this again a little podcast coming maybe <gasps> None of us have got time for that. Stop. No. Stop, stop, stop. Right, we're going to wrap this up and we're going to yeah. now go and have a quick wander of the site and then I guess we'll be going on our going. merry way. Yeah. Feel it's free hard. to invite us back anytime you like. Seafort, yes. Cornwall. <laughs> We've had an amazing time. It's been brilliant. <laughs> Got a twitch there. <laughs> Just a little one. Right, we'll um, go and have a wander and take you with us. Yeah. Enjoy. See you later.
hope you enjoyed that video. Oh my God, it was so much fun to edit. Huge thanks to everybody that got involved in making the weekend such a blast. We really, really enjoyed it. And special thanks to Seaforts Cornwall for inviting me and a guest along. Karen, you're an absolute superstar and I adore you. Everybody that's watching, if you don't know Karen and you haven't seen her channel, please go along and give her a follow. Her video won't be live at the same time as mine because she's in quite a lot of pain still. Blast her, she's still recovering. Um, but yeah, go give her a follow, ring her little bell, and then you'll get a notification when she does upload her video of our weekend. And you can like watch it from both sides. It'll be fun. Now, if you fancy enjoying the high life and having a little glamping adventure, then pop down into the description box underneath this video and go and check out their website. They're such a lovely company. They're such lovely people. It's such a magical area of Cornwall. It's kind of like the really quiet, secret little area of Cornwall. Nobody really goes to South East Cornwall tip on holiday. Most people go further down. I think a lot of locals go to this area if I'm really honest. You've got great access straight over the water. You've got Plymouth, which is in Devon, the next county over. So it's it's just, it's great. It's stunning. And if you've got any interest in like military history, then Maker Heights, where the glamping site and the cafe, like all of that is in Maker Heights, which is this old military base. Go and check out their website. Give them a follow on social as well. Really active on social media, beautiful photography. Oh, and if you do go and stay there, please do me a favor and uh, tag me in some photos so that I can live vicariously through your adventures too. So I'm out of here. I will catch you up in the next video. Peace.